Now let's go to lesson two. Common misconceptions. How do you respond to this objection right here? Christianity must be proven scientifically. I'll accept Christianity when you prove it with the scientific method. How do you respond to that? JJ? It can't be proven by the scientific method because scientific method uh, requires it to be observable and repeatable. It, it's instead a legal historical uh, method question uh, because it deals with things that are written, testimonies, uh, physical properties, things that happened prior to our existence. Okay, good, good. Yeah, so the essential claims of Christianity are, just talked about it, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, the God-man. Well, can we stick Jesus back down in the grave and see him rise again and again and again and again? Can we? No, it's not a repeatable experiment. It's an historical event. It's a historical event that must be proven using the legal historic method of truth where you go on testimony. And we have good testimony to prove these claims. Now, does science support Christianity? Absolutely. But we're, we don't prove the essential claims of Christianity using the scientific method, you know, with the experiments, repeating, controlled environment, all that. Misconception two. I can't accept Christianity because there isn't enough evidence for me to be 100% sure that it is true. In other words, this person is demanding absolute proof. Prove it to me absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt. How do you respond to that? Can you prove anything's true with 100% certainty? Um, can you prove that you have a brain with 100% with cer certainty? Um, can you prove anything without reasonable doubt? Um, would be a better question. And yes, we can because of the historical method. Okay, so, yeah, um, you could say this, you can't prove anything historical with 100% certainty. Something that happened in the past, and really anything that has to do with matters of fact, um, as far as proving it. But if you know it, but you can't prove it uh, absolutely, you can show the overwhelming evidence for it. You can prove beyond a reasonable doubt. But you couldn't even get into your car and drive across town if you had to have absolute proof that you would get across town safely. There's a little bit of faith there, right? You, you base what you believe on the overwhelming evidence for, for what you, you have there. Um, now, in the case of Christianity, um, is there sufficient evidence? Yes? Blaise Pascal says there's enough evidence to convince anyone who's not set against it, but not enough to bring anyone into the kingdom of God who will not come. So, what do you think God is doing here? when he's allowing people to, to reject it, even in the face of overwhelming evidence. Well, C.S. Lewis says the very world that God's made hinders him from, I guess, making himself absolutely known. Um, the relationship to humans, because the relationship he wants to have is that of trust and that of um, faith, you could say. Or belief, and so um, I think the first chapter we read in the uh, "I don't have enough faith to be an atheist." C.S. Lewis said, "God can only woo, but if He were absolutely to show Himself, then it wouldn't be faith and trust that we're having in Him; it would be knowledge, and that's not the world He created." 
Well, people really wouldn't have a choice to love God, would they? Like, we can't. We can choose to, to reject the evidence. And partly it's because there's not absolute proof that could just be, you know, set over into someone's head. Okay, you, know, you got to believe. You know, people can people can reject signs in the sky. They can they can reject a miracle done right before their eyes if they wanted to. You know, find some other explanation. Yeah, Jeffrey. Um, I'm also in life of Christ, and I found a statement in John, very interesting that said Jesus came to His own, and yet His own did not receive Him. They had all the evidence. I mean, if, if someone wanted empirical evidence in front of them, eyewitness, mm -hmm. it was there. Mm -hmm. And still they had the option, and they took the option, option to reject Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if someone can't say, if you show me all the evidence, they can't say that I'll necessarily believe, because they still have to have that, make that choice to believe, whether the evidence is right before them, or whether it's mm -hmm. through, right. through another account. Okay. Very good. Now, you remember Thomas? The interaction with, with Thomas and Jesus, that was that's very instructive. You know, doubting Thomas. He needed a lot of evidence. He couldn't take his friend's word for it, which he should have. You know, they were trustworthy testimony. But he wanted to actually feel Jesus, see him himself. And Jesus gives him a rebuke, doesn't he? You know, he presents himself. And he says, uh, uh, blessed are those who don't see and still believe, right? Something like that. So he expects us. And in a way, Thomas stands in for all those other skeptics out there, like maybe you and me, you know, who need a lot of evidence. But he's standing in there for us, you know. He's getting that extra evidence that, that he needs. And then he's, you know sharing that with us. Um, Jesus accommodated him. I'm not sure all the ways in which he can accommodate us, but uh, you know, some people need a little more proof than others. But God still expects us to believe even without all the evidence in our face. Yeah. Right. Yes. Just one quick note. I think the important thing is to remember here is that if there were absolute proof, it would over override our will. Yeah. And so the will is essential, and God gives enough to say this is probable. But if there was undoubtable evidence in which absolute proof, it's almost we wouldn't have a choice. There's no other option. Yeah. So I think the will is important. Here. Yeah, absolutely. We can't override our will. He doesn't want to override our will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, does that mean we can't know for sure that Christianity is true? We know. We live as though we have absolute proof. Okay? We've taken that step of faith based on the evidence, and the Holy Spirit's confirmed to our heart that what we believe is true. Okay? We have no doubt. We don't doubt. We can't maybe prove to someone else, absolutely, but we are convinced, based on all the evidence and the testimony of the Spirit, that uh, this is true. Do you have a comment, Nick? Just uh, what Brandon just said. If that's true, then how could God reveal Himself through an angel or through Jesus Christ coming in a vision to someone or something like that? Because that I means that shows absolute truth. I mean, that's absolute, where it's just like I know I saw this and I know it's here and I, I can see it. I can reach out. I can I can just I know that's there. That's absolute. How is that? I don't think him showing absolute is overriding your but will. Could, but could you even reject that? Well, you can reject. That's absolute, though, and you can reject it. It's not overriding your will to right. have something absolute. I mean, it's it's absolute that when you're thirsty, if you drink water, it'll fulfill you. But you don't have to believe it. You're stupid if you don't. But you don't have to believe. I mean, it doesn't override your will if there's absolute truth. Yeah, let's, let's see Joel's response to that. Uh, even more evidence for what Nick said is Adam and Eve. Um, they had absolute proof God exists. They walked and talked with him, but yet they rejected 
mm -hmm. rejected him. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what, you know, how much evidence for God's existence it, there is, people still have their own will intact. Mm -hmm. And they will reject him or, you know, keep that relationship with him. They still have that choice. Mm -hmm. And Adam and Eve is just a good example of that. So we can, we can have absolute just irrefutable proof right in front of our face, which I think that exists. Um, so it, it's just, it's our own personal choice. Yeah. I just don't know if I would call that 100% proof, because it's hard to, I mean, you, you should always find an explanation. And, may, and maybe maybe it is absolute proof, except the, that's how you deal with that, you know, I guess. You, you could always find some, well, that was, that was just my mind playing tricks on me, or whatever. You can always do that, because, you know, God allows us to reject truth in that way. Yes, and I, and I think it is. Does have something to do with it? It just sounds like taking skepticism a little too far into yeah. insanity if you're thinking that. Well, yeah. Say. Well, they, they almost do, really. <laughs> do you have a comment? Well, I, I was just going to say anything can be reasoned away. Yeah. And if, even if you know, Jesus Christ came to my dorm room last night and showed himself to me and told me. Um, I don't know, something that I was supposed to do, something like that. I could reason that away based on something I ate in the cafeteria last night. Mm -hmm. Something, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like it says, what is it, that the story of Scrooge, you know, you could be a piece of what, undigested beef or whatever. You, know. you can even reason anything away. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, nothing can be absolute if you have a way of reasoning in a way. So, yeah. Yeah. At least that's the way I yeah, see it. That, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, let's move on here. The historical evidence for Christianity is not absolute, but it is sufficient. People should believe uh, because of the evidence. Okay? Uh, misconception three, truth is relative. If you believe something that's truth for you, well, uh, we said that that's, that's not true. Um, believing something does not make it true. I gave the illustration of the hydrochloric acid in a beaker that someone thinks is Sprite. Well, does it turn into Sprite if I believe it's Sprite? No. Believing something does not make it true. Even spiritually, even with things that we don't see, how would it be any different? You don't create your own reality. Let me let me illustrate this by showing you a little uh, maybe magic trick or something here. Let me just show you show you this here. Now we're a little bit far away. I don't have any. I guess I could have used that stand to put it right in front of you. But can you can you see this? This is a this is a little dime. Okay. Can you, is that real, you think? Is that real? Okay, what I'm going to do is make this dime, this dime disappear. Alright? I'm going to do it by using this tube and this glass. Okay, it's, it's, I have to use you know, special forces and power of the mind here, so let me concentrate on this. But, um, Using this glass, I can make that dime disappear. I can suck that up right through this tube. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. Concentrate. All right. Everybody see that dime? Everybody see the dime? Okay. Okay, check my sleeves. Let's leave. Okay, let's go. Now, if I concentrate a little bit harder, I can I can get it to to come back. Okay. There we 
go. And then I think I can even do it faster. Um, let's see here. Pull that up through here. Gone. And I'm going to bring it back. Okay. Now, uh, where did that penny or that, that dime go? Where did it go? Underneath that extra. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. You figured it out. Now, yeah, the, the secret of it is this little uh, piece of paper underneath the, the glass, which hit it. Okay, but my. The reason for the illustration is to show you that even if you believed that that dime had disappeared, was gone, was in my sleeve or, or somewhere, evaporated into air, it still was there. It was there all the time. So believing something is not the same as something being true, right? It doesn't make it true by believing it. Something can be, can be false that you believe. Something can be true that you think is false. Okay? Um, truth doesn't depend on faith to be true. You know, it's like that, that kid that said, well, since you believe in heaven, you're going to go to heaven because you believe in heaven. Because you create your own reality by what you believe. But for me, when I die, I'm just going to cease to exist because I don't believe in the afterlife. Well, that's crazy. You don't create your own reality by believing it. You know? The truth is not relative. It's, it's, it's objective. And here's, a, here's another reason to not believe the truth is relative. And that is because it's self-contradictory. Sentence in this box is false. Is that true or false? False. <laughs> is that true or false? It's a false statement. If it's true, then it's false. If it's false, then it's true. It's self contradictory, actually. Right. So we eliminate that that obstacle away from someone's mind. Okay, let me let me finish with this one. Misconception four. Doesn't matter what you believe as long as you are sincere, as long as you have faith. Doesn't matter who or what you put your faith in. What matters is that you believe, period. And what was my point here? Are you saved by faith? We're saved by grace. Through faith. If faith saved us, I could put my faith in a light bulb, or in a podium, or, you know, a computer, or an iPhone. Oh, iPhone, save me. And I'd be saved, if all that mattered is a real faith. Um, now, of course, we understand saving faith has certain properties. Uh, but true saving faith has to be in the right, what? Object. Object. The object of our faith is important. If you put your faith in the wrong object, then can you be saved? No, because we have to put our faith in Christ. He is the one who saves us by our putting our faith in Him through faith. Uh, so we're saved by Christ or by grace, the grace of Christ, through faith. We appropriate it by faith. So the illustration I, I gave about, you know, the Muslim and the Christian, the, the, you know, Mark the Muslim had this strong faith in Muhammad and in Allah. Is he saved? No, not if he's putting his faith. It doesn't matter how strong. The person with the weak faith. JJ, the Jesus follower, you know, he, he believed, but... His faith was weak. He had a genuine faith, but he struggled a lot. Um, who was saved? The one with the strong faith or the one with the weak faith? Okay. One with the weak faith, because he put his faith, well, 
in the right object, in Jesus, in the Jesus who could save him. So this is huge. It matters who you put your faith in. Let me give you another, another illustration here. Okay, so you're wanting to go to Chicago. You think that I-70 is going to get you to Chicago. Nick, have you ever been on I-70? Do you believe it will get you to Chicago? Yeah. I-70 goes east and west, right? Chicago's north of that. I-70 will never get you to Chicago. If you stay on it, it'll, you'll have to turn. If you're, if you're heading west, you'll have to turn right, won't you? Uh, from here. So. They get you towards it, but it won't get you to it. <laughs> okay. You're going to blow my illustration. <laughs> no, but it, it, no. But see, it, it won't get you there, will it? You know, it, it, you, you have to get off. Right? Now, some people think that it doesn't matter what religion you belong to. As long as you're sincere, as long as you believe something, you know, you'll... You know, all roads lead home. You know, uh, it'll, it'll get you guys. As long as you believe something, as long as you're faithful to what you believe, then, then you'll go to heaven. Is that true? Using this illustration, no, we, we can see, okay, yeah, some religion might get you part way there. In other words, there may be some some things in that religion that are true, and they are many times, may get you part way, but you'll have to make a right turn. You'll have to, to head north. You'll have to change the way you think and who you believe in in order to be saved. I, I had a, I have a sister. One time I... I was sharing this illustration with her because she had said the same thing. It doesn't really matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. You know, you'll be all right in the end. And I said, okay. I gave her an illustration similar to this with Rose that she knew. And I said, okay, so do you believe that if you stayed on I-70 long enough that it would get you to Chicago? She said, yes. I said, you're an idiot. <laughs> Which was a very, very bad thing to say. Okay? You know, even though she's my sister, you know, you can, you can make people angry by calling them an idiot. And I did, actually. Uh, so I, I apologize. Well, I immediately clarified myself. I said, if you believe that, you're an idiot. I knew she didn't believe it. She was actually smart enough to know where I was going with that. She didn't want to admit that it didn't really matter what you believe. You've got to believe the right thing. No, you can, okay, maybe the problem is you don't believe hard enough. Right? Maybe if you really, 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 really believed that I-70 would get you to Chicago. Is that... Is that the problem? No. No. Okay. <laughs> you have a thought? I've actually <clears throat> talked to somebody that um, talking about truth and like what is truth. They actually um, said, like we said, well, is it wrong? Trying to the more argument, is it wrong? You know, uh, to kill your mother or something. And they said, if it's your truth, and if it is what you believe, it is okay. And they went as far as to say, if you kill me, as long as it's your truth, it's totally fine. And wow. how, how do you, how would you, do you just forget about them because there's <laughs> a bar, like, there's nothing you can say if everything's just relative. How do you, how do you refute that or can you even refute that? Well, it doesn't work in real life. Uh, what's your response? 
with I me, mean, I'm in a situation like that. Sometimes I'll just go along with what they're saying and stay consistent in my argument just to get them to walk away faster. <laughs> um, JJ? Along the same lines, you said that if it was my truth that I could kill the person I'm talking to, then it's okay for me. Well, I would ask him, does your truth involve you staying alive and you wanting to live and all that? Then our truths collide. One of us has to be wrong. Yeah. You know, I, I shared this illustration with another person who said it really doesn't matter what religion you belong to as long as you're sincere. I gave this illustration to them. I said, so if you're on this road and, and you believe that you, you're staying out long enough, you know, will you get there? If it, if it obviously he's not going to. And she says this, she says, well, when you put it that way, you know, it made sense to her. The illustration helped her understand it. The Bible says there, there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. You know, we've got to make sure we're on the right pathway. Let me, let me illustrate this another way. I need a volunteer. What we're going to do here... We have to have a lot of faith here, okay? What you're going to do is walk across that cardboard. You can't step all the way over. You got to, you got to sit, you know, go in the middle. Okay. So. Take a chance. So you know, it's going to take a little faith, isn't it? He's, yeah. He's got to walk across that without collapsing the board or falling through. Okay. So, um, just go ahead and try. Okay, that's not working. Okay, he needs a more faith, doesn't he? Yeah, a lot. Okay, so let's let's say believe, believe. Let's help him out. Okay, get up there. Let's help him out. Believe, 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 believe. Come on, have faith. Come on, have faith. Believe. Come on. Go ahead, believe. Yeah, come on. You're not believing. No, in the middle, in the middle. Come on. Go, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> oh, oh. What a failure. All right. Well, <laughs> let me, uh, let's try this. Let's see if, let's see if that'll, that'll work. It didn't slip. Let's see. Let's see. He's, he still has to have faith, doesn't he? He's more hesitant on that one. Yeah. Okay. Give him a hand. He did it. You must have believed in the board. Right? Yeah, you believe in that board this time? I believe it's not a couple Now, what made the difference here? I've had prior experience with boards. <laughs> <laughs> what made the difference? The strength quality of the material. Was it his faith? No. Yeah. No. What made the difference was the object of his faith. The object, the, the, what he was standing on. The cardboard is not going to hold him up. Right? The real board did. The real board um, was a proper object of his faith. Okay? It matters what you stand on, what you believe, that makes a difference. Yeah. Um, I got a question about this illustration. Um, what if somebody <clears throat> were to believe, like, to say, ultimately, what makes Chicago the final destination? What if there was infinite number of destinations? So all roads then would lead to somewhere, and if that's where you're going, that's... So, like, what makes Chicago God? Or what makes, um, you know, what if I take I-70 and it gets me to a city that I think is God, or that is God. What if, such as like a Buddhist kind of mentality, all roads lead to heaven. So some, I'm going to go somewhere. So what? how would you deal with that? Well, I, I guess different people have different ideas of what's ultimate reality, or what's what's salvation, obviously, to a Hindu or a Buddhist. Salvation is basically melting into nothingness, you know. That's their idea. Um, but they, of course, reject hell. And, uh, you know, but what if hell's real? 
You know, what, if, what if their whole idea of reality is wrong? Obviously, we need to be working on, for some people, some deep presuppositions on uh, what they believe. 